let me start with asking you about this housing downturn and really how has it been specifically different from the other housing slumps that we've seen? Well, I've been through a few of these now and if I had to describe this one, it, it was more violent. Prices went down further and the inventories persisted a little longer. You know, home builders seem to be pretty optimistic. I, I've spoken to a few about the spring selling season, but I'm wondering how optimistic can you be with an unemployment rate still at 9%? Yeah, um, well, I'm optimistic about KB Home. I can't tell you about the other builders, but I like what we've done to transform our business. And we're different now than we were at the beginning of the downturn five years ago in our product and our approach and how we're marketing our, our homes to the consumer. What specifically? I mean, again, home builders have been right-sizing their businesses, they tell me. They've been buying land. They've been looking at smaller home builders to acquire. Are those some of the things that you've been doing? What's been the strategy? Well, we, we always do things like that. And where we're a little different now is we've pushed the envelope on energy efficiency. Think about today's consumer. They're so budget conscious. And every dollar of utility bills you can save is very meaningful. And with the technology advances, we can now actually tell the customer what their projected utilities would be for a year for the first time. Is that really going to make a difference, though? I mean, are, is that really going to make a difference to a consumer who's walking in and saying, I'm going to buy this home versus another based on its energy efficiency? Well, it, it absolutely does make a difference. And one of the things that's been a surprise to me as we've introduced this is how little the consumer thinks about utility bills. And if you think think about it, it's the biggest purchase in their life and they have no idea what their cost of home ownership will be until they've lived there a full year through all four seasons. And we're finding customers that uh, think their utility bill in a home they purchased would be 200 and it ends up being 400. It's a big, big shift and with our Energy Star qualified homes, we're significantly lower than the resale down the street. Let's talk again about right-sizing the business. What have you done at KB to right-size your business and be ready for what's coming in the next couple of months or a couple of years? Well, we've done a lot of right-sizing. We were an early mover in 2006 because we saw it coming having been through these before. And when you talk about right-sizing, it's lower your overhead, fix your balance sheet, lower your inventory, lower the lots under control and get positioned for another day. And the art to this is how can you lower your overhead yet retain your strategic growth footprint for when the housing market recovers. And today we're still in 30 markets at uh, a size much lower than our peak in terms of homes delivered. So we're locked and loaded and poised. Okay, and what, and what are you doing to be locked and loaded? So are you adding more staff? Are you looking at different sites to expand beyond that 30 or expanding within that 30 markets? Um, don't need to go to any more markets. In the 30 markets we're in, in our peak year, we delivered 28,000 homes. In 2010, we delivered 7,600 homes. So we don't need to go anywhere. There's a great opportunity in, this, in the 30 cities that we're in today. We could double our size without hiring many employees. So the leverage of overhead is there. We've retained uh, our growth footprint, so we can go right back to work. But when we start a home, we do hire contractors. So there's still jobs created, just not within our company. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the markets. We'll start with California, which is your largest market. Um, and that was one of the hardest hit in terms of the housing downturn. It still tops the list probably for foreclosures, among others out in the West cities. So what about California right now? How is it looking, and specifically what market? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a great question, and I'm glad you went down to a local level because many people make the mistake of seeing a housing start number or inventory number or national foreclosure number, and they lose sight of how local real estate and housing really is. And what we're seeing in California is a fairly typical recovery starting to take place. People want to live in the more desirable areas close to work. And as the prices have adjusted lower, people are now able to live, to buy a home that they can qualify for in an area that previously they would have been priced out of. So demand uh, reduces in geography and in those areas close to the coast, no surprise, everyone wants to live near the beach, 
in California, the markets are performing quite well, actually. Many of them, uh, there's too little inventory and we're seeing prices go up. The further inland you get, further from jobs in LA, Orange County, San Diego, the Bay Area, the further inland you get, the markets get softer. So when you hear about price declines or foreclosure activity, it's in the more remote locations, the exurbs of the metropolitan areas, not, not uh, right next to work. So how are your communities doing then, specifically KB, in the areas that are closer to the coast? Uh, doing well, performing in many cases above historical sales rates and historical pricing in that area. So it, it reinforces the right product at the right price point can do well in any market condition. And I think it's a statement to what we're doing in energy. Let's get to some of the other markets that you're in. Um, you still have uh, some footprint in Nevada, Arizona, Florida. Again, markets that were really hard hit uh, in, the, in the downturn. Um, when you look at an area like Nevada, we'll talk about Las Vegas. I read a JP Morgan report that talked about uh, sort of their tour for the spring selling season. And they said that you actually spoke about a little bit of pricing power um, in that particular area. Is that what you're seeing in Nevada? Um, well, I spoke about pricing power along the coast in California. We've seen some in Nevada in select communities. And I, I can't recall how our average community sales rates were in Nevada versus the rest of the country for the year. If you go back to our second quarter, our best sales per community were in Las Vegas. And it's because we had acquired new lots at a new basis at prices that, that would allow a home to be built at a price very competitive with resales. And it shows everyone wants a new home. You just have to hit the price point and the, the features that they, they desire. There's something else that came up um, in Las Vegas in particular. The Wall Street Journal was reporting that um, you have a 48% stake in a failed Las Vegas community that uh, is being forced into bankruptcy. I guess it has to do with J.P. Morgan. They are mm -hmm. forcing it into bankruptcy. Can you give me yeah. any update on that particular situation for KB Homes? Well, we talked about it at length on our earnings call, and I wouldn't call it a failed community. It's actually one of our best sellers. And people hear uh, what was in the paper and think tumbleweeds and no houses and broken streetlights. It's not the case. We've actually delivered over 500 homes in this community, beautiful parks, beautiful entry, pools, uh, schools. It's a great community. In fact, it was our top selling community in our fourth quarter where we delivered 40 homes in the fourth quarter there. And I share that because uh, it, the community is working fine today. We're in a dispute the builders, and it's more than KB, there's six builders, mm -hmm. and the banks were in a dispute over uh, what to do with the, the remainder of the community and how to best manage it and optimize the asset. Mm -hmm. We're in litigation, it's been going on for a long time, so I can't really give you any uh, color on the litigation, but we'll, we intend to continue to protect our homeowners and protect KB Homes' interest in Inspirato. Now, KB Homes obviously um, moves really or, or is in the market with first-time home buyers. So when you look at the first-time home buyer, how does that first-time home buyer today look very different than that first-time home buyer for even four years ago? Um, well, it's very interesting. This is a great example of how fluid and nimble we are in reacting to the market. In 2006, less than a third of our buyers were first-time. It was all move up and uh, active adult. In 2010, 60% are first time. And it's the buyer that's coming out to buy the homes. They don't have a home to sell. They frankly, in a lot of markets, got priced out in the run up and they're thrilled. They're actually able to buy a home, energy efficient home in a location that they like. So it, I don't know that they're different from before there's more of them relative to the other buyer segments today. What's the challenge though? Because in the reports that I'm doing, financing is still very tight, um, as well as mortgage rates starting to creep up. So for you, what is the challenge in trying to get that first time home buyer really to close the deal and get in that house? There's no question there's headwinds with interest rates going up and I am concerned about that. And if they are interested in buying a home, today's the time to buy before interest rates do go up. Affordability is still at incredible levels, all time highs. So that's uh, driving uh, the, the uh, sales that we are seeing. The, 
underwriting has tightened up, but it's still readily available, whether it's FHA, VA, or a conforming conventional loan. So underwriting is tighter, but we're still uh, selling homes. Frankly, the biggest challenge is the consumer is not that confident today. And in normal times, our demand is driven by job growth and consumer confidence. You have to feel good about things, and we don't control those. So I don't spend much time worrying about those two things because I don't control it. We do try to put a product out that the consumer responds favorably to. And actually, if, if I went back to what's different with today's customer, they're responding very well to our energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. What does worry you then? as the um, CEO of KB Home. <laughs> well, the, the economy worries me, and, and it's fragile right now, and the housing recovery is fragile. And I know that the sustained economic recovery of the United States won't occur unless housing recovers along with it, and there are a lot of stress signs in some of the cities where it's not that stable. So I, I worry about where the economy's headed. I think our company's well positioned. I think we've navigated well. Our sales, where we're open, are doing fine, and we're ready to take advantage of whatever market uh, is ahead of us. Do you think that the home building industry needs some more help from Washington? Um, what? Now you put me on a political platform. Um, I think that if the administration is looking for green jobs, you hear that a lot, the homes we're building are very green. In fact, they do more for the carbon footprint than the hybrid car does and every home we build creates jobs. So I, I think they could do some more things to help stimulate job growth through helping housing. Having said that, um, we believe in the free market and we know over time things will be just fine. So, so in terms of green jobs, are there more incentives maybe for home builders to build green homes or, or something um, like that? Well, uh, there's a lot of news right now about the GSEs and I I think if they were to shut down mortgage financing today, it would have an unintended consequence in home prices and demand, and I think it could hurt hurt the national economy. So uh, on the, the green job front, if there were rebates available to the customers that are buying an Energy Star home, um, uh, in our case, we don't charge the consumer for the Energy Star qualified home. So there's a benefit to the environment and there's a benefit to the consumer at no cost. But if there were ways to stimulate things like uh, an appraisal where you get value for Energy Star or the customer that has more money in their pocket because their utility bill is much lower in a KB home, uh, it, where it would affect the underwriting, I think that could help. But I, I don't control any of that.